Hello everybody and welcome to what will be the last video from my temporary shop. I've enjoyed the last couple of months working out of the shop. Um, I'd like to say thank you to my brother-in-law Bill for allowing me to utilize this space and it's given me the opportunity to, to continue to make videos and to do what I love which is turn pins and just really get out and, and have some time to myself to play. Now two weeks ago I posted a video on a modified slimline pin. You all know what a regular slimline looks like. It's just a pin with a, a center band and you hold the top and twist the bottom to eject and retract the ink. There's nothing really, really exciting about that. And you've seen me make hundreds of these pins. Now a modified slimline pin, it's a little bit different. Here's an example of the one I'll be making today. You turn the nib only to eject and retract the ink. The nice thing about this is if you get a gorgeous blank, you don't have to cut it and separate the blank. You can show the entire blank. There are also no rules. You could do all types of beading and coves and, and any type of design you want on this pen. It gives a lot of artistic opportunity. Now, when I showed the photo and made the first pen, I thought, I've got a great idea. Nobody has ever done this. Well, two weeks have passed since I posted that pen. And since then, I've been on the internet and I found out that this is not an original idea. As unfortunate as that is, I wish it was, but there are, there are hundreds of references to modified slimline pins on the internet. There are articles over at IEP. Um, there may even be some videos on YouTube. However, um, what I'm going to do today, I think, is show you the simplest way to make a modified slimline pin. I really hope you enjoy this video, and let me know what you think at the end. I'm really excited about this because... It just, it's a whole new world of opportunity for me uh, to make some amazing pins. And I'll be building on this platform uh, in the future as I do videos for you guys. So enough of me talking, let's make a pin. Before I really get into the project today, I need to say a special thank you to Gary House over at Dusty Dog Woodworks out of Oakdale, California. And I'm going to include a link to Gary's website, but as you can see, he has sent me a box of wood, and this is some figured pecan, and this stuff's absolutely gorgeous. Gary is uh, selling these blanks, and he sent me a few to try out, a little bit of cherry. I've got some red cedar. I'm kind of showing you guys the type of things that he offers, um, just in case you're interested. He'd love to have you stop by his shop. A little spalted maple there. This is something I'm really excited about is this flame box elder. Look at the color in that. Absolutely gorgeous wood. And last but not least, this is what I'll be using today is a little bit of this figured cedar. When is the last time you saw wood that looked like that? Absolutely gorgeous. And I think I'm going to take the blank right from the end here. And this is the one that we're going to use in this project today. Like I said, I will include some links to Gary's website um, down in the comments below. So you can stop by and, and take a look and see if you'd uh, like to pick up a little bit of this gorgeous wood. A friend of mine, Becky Arnold, brought me this pen. And she asked me if there was any way that I could turn a pen that sort of had this profile. She really likes the way this fits her hand as she's writing. Um, so that's what I'm going to do is try to mimic this profile on the pen that I make today. I'm going to start off with just a basic slimline pen kit. This is actually called the Fun Line, and I got it from Penn State. And it comes with a couple of brass tubes. And what you want to do when you make one of these pens is we just start out by marking our tube lengths. Now you'll notice I leave a little bit of a gap there at the end of the tube. And that just, I always leave just a tiny bit extra. And I'm going to mark where my tube is here. And then I'll move it over and I'll leave a little bit of a gap. And I'll mark it there. And my center line there lets me know when I separate these where to put them back together. That's how I would normally start out with a slimline pin. Now, with this particular pin, we don't do any of this. We lay our two blanks together. I've left a little bit of a, of a lip on the far end, and I'm going to leave a little bit of a lip on this end, and I'm going to mark this. Now, this will be my blank. I will never cut this blank. It's going to stay one piece throughout the entire process. I am going to go ahead and nip this end off, and then I'll come back and we'll move on with the next step, which will be drilling the blank. I selected a 7 millimeter drill bit that was longer than the blank. Because keep in mind, I need this to penetrate the end of the blank to drill a hole completely through it, but I also need enough room at the top to be able to grip this in the chuck of the drill press. I've gone ahead and chucked up my bit, and you can see I left it long enough to extend just past the end 
of my blank. This is a long bit, and sometimes these longer bits tend to have a little play in them. So I'm going to be really careful. I'm going to drill as far down into the blank as I can. Then I'll swing the drill press table around and realign this blank with the bit, and we'll finish drilling it out. So let's get started. halfway through. Wow, that cedar sure does make the shop smell nice. Let's go ahead. I'm going to lift this up on here. Okay, I've got a little bit of an issue because it's not high enough to fit on the table. So I'm going to go get a couple of boards to place under here, drill a little farther, and then we'll bring the table around to finish out. I've added a board just below my vise, and that's going to raise me up enough to get farther down into the blank, and then we'll finish it off with the table. I'm going to pause for a minute. That singing is letting me know that my flights are getting clogged inside of my blank. I took this over to a trash can and emptied out all of the debris inside of the blank. Uh, when I hear that singing sound, that tells me that my flights are not properly clearing. And because I'm on such a deep blank, that sort of makes sense. It can't get the chips out of the blank. So I want to stop as soon as I hear that and clear it because if you don't and you get a lot of stuff packed, a lot of chips packed into your flights of your drill bit, it's going to not cut. It's going to build excessive heat. It will wallow out your hole. And I have had it before where it will blow the blank out. And this blank is so gorgeous, I do not want to lose it. So I'm ready to go ahead. I should be in a position now where I think I can finish out the blank. So let's get started. All right, you heard a little bit of squeaking in there. The flights have some debris in them, but I am through the bottom of the blank. Let me get the table out of the way. Got a tight, tight fit there. Yep, you can see right down through that blank. So let's go get this glued up and move on to the next step. I've roughed up my tubes and I'm now ready to glue the back tube into this blank. I noticed something, and you'll see it right here. There's a tiny hairline crack in this blank. That should not affect us. I'll glue the back tube in this end, and then I'll drool CA, a thin CA, all over this crack, squeeze it together with a, with a nice clamp, and then I'll shoot it with some accelerator, and that will be a non-issue. But I'm going to take care of that now. And as I look the blank over, I don't see any other flaws in this blank. And that is probably a result, as I drilled, this was the top, and you heard the singing at the end, and that's the type of thing that can happen when you hear your drill bit singing. So if you hear that bit start to make that squeal noise, get it out of there, clear the flights, clear the blank, because uh, you're building up heat and you're not cutting. Um, and the heat can cause the blank to split. So that's probably my fault. Let me get this tube glued in. I roughed these tubes up with a little 120 grit sandpaper. I'm going to put a lot of glue on the back of this tube. I'm going to push it in and out of the blank, and I'm going to stop just below the surface, okay? We're not going to put the front tube in yet. We're done. We're going to let this dry. Actually, we're going to help this dry. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead now and get my thin CA on the crack and get that taken care of. All right. Here's my crack. I'm just going to drool the CA on there. Whoa, that thin goes everywhere, so watch your fingers. Lots of thin on there. I'm going to go ahead and clamp this together nice and tight. Put a lot of pressure on there, and then I'm going to be very generous with the accelerator. And now that crack has all but disappeared. Let that dry for just a few more seconds because I did put quite a bit of glue on there. Give the accelerator a chance to fully work. And then I'm going to barrel trim this blank. I've got my barrel trimmer in the press and I'm just going to take very light cuts. This is the back end of the blank and I want to take very light cuts and just square it up.
the tube was right up next to the end of the blank. I tried to keep it as close to the end as possible so it didn't take much. I just had to flatten it out. Now I want to flatten the other end out. And here's the trick to doing that. We take our second tube and we simply drop it into the blank. We'll go ahead and put the blank, there we go, up on the drill press. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to barrel trim down to the level of the second tube. And there we go, you can see the second tube is just right at the lip of the blank. At this point, I need to stop and give another, another thank you. Bob Montgomery, in my last video, I said I did not have a number two Morse tapered Jacobs chuck. Bob had an extra one that he was not using and he sent it to me. And I greatly appreciate it, it has been a lifesaver. Um, I'm gonna, at this point, give a shout out to Bob. He has, uh, he also sells exotic blanks uh, native woods, acrylics, some other custom materials, um, and he does custom metal work and powder coating in his shop. So if you need any of that, please uh, go down and take a look at Robert's services that he offers, and if he can help you out, let him do that, because he certainly helped me out, and I, I truly appreciate it. Now what you're seeing here is kind of unusual. You're seeing a mandrel in a Jacob's Chuck, and the reason why you're seeing this is yesterday, I had a couple of pins I had to get out, and I bent my mandrel saver mandrel. I had this old mandrel from my, you might remember I had an old Ryobi lathe years ago. It was a uh, 16 teeth per inch, uh, three quarter inch headstock, and it was a number one Morse taper. Um, it had this particular mandrel actually went onto the threaded portion of the headstock, and the mandrel threads into this nice little, little um, adapter. This particular lathe is a number two Morse taper. It's one inch by eight teeth per inch, so that, that adapter would not fit. However, with this new Jacob's Chuck, I was able to unthread the mandrel from the adapter, chuck it up in the chuck. I got back to turning. I finished four additional pins yesterday, and I'm going to use it today to show you guys how I make this pin. Um, I will be ordering a new mandrel saver mandrel, but as a temporary fix, this has been a godsend. As I'm putting this on the mandrel, I want you to notice this is still a loose tube. It's down at the far end. This was the back end. I'm leaving the tube in there for turning. I'm going to start off by just truing this blank up and getting it down to rough size. And then we'll come back and uh, use the other pin to try to mimic the shape of the grip at the front end of this pin. I want you to take a look at that blank. Is that not the absolute most beautiful piece of cedar you've ever seen in your life? I mean, just look at it and wait until I get a finish on there and that grain just pops. This is, this is amazing. Becky told me that she likes a little thicker pen. It's just easier for her to grip when she's writing. And I think I'm at the right size. I think what I'll do is round this tip over and then I'm going to come back and try to put a bit of a concave in this portion of the pen. So let's Let's see how we can do with that. I'm just going to use a little detail gouge to round this over.
and I've got this little gouge from a pin set I've got, and I'm going to use this to just sort of take a little bit out of this and give it that concave um, area. Let me bring the original pin back up and kind of get an idea, maybe put a marking on there uh, so that I don't go too deep or too far back. I want to test my grip. I really like how that feels. It's, it's a little thicker. It's got a nice concave section. It's very comfortable, just like this is. Uh, so I'm very happy with that. I think what I'm going to do now is just sort of clean the back of the pin up and prepare the opposite end uh, for the cap. really like the look of this. I'm going to go ahead and do some sanding. Um, I'm going to go from a 150 grit all the way down to a 600 grit. I'm definitely not going to record the sanding. Um, I'll come back when it's sanded and we'll talk about getting a finish on it. A quick note before I get started. Cedar is a very soft wood and uh, I think what I'm going to do is instead of using my my 150 grit paper, I think I'm going to jump up to the 220. I've got a nice smooth cut on this, and I really don't want a super aggressive paper because it will take a lot of meat away from this blank. So I think I'm going to start with the 220 and uh, work my way down to the 600 from there. I just finished sanding, and there's something that I wanted you guys to see. Wait until, this is, this is where I'm cleaning this blank. It's kind of a, a quick reveal of how this thing is going to look. I mean, is that not amazing? Look at that. Let me go ahead and finish cleaning, and uh, we'll get some finish on it. For cleaning my blanks, I just use a little bit of denatured alcohol. You can pick it up at the paint section of any of your big box stores. Here's another little tip. As I apply my CA, you guys have always seen this blue tape on my fingertip, but I like to wrap the tip of my finger in a little bit of blue tape. And what this does is it keeps the CA glue from soaking through the paper towel and getting on my finger, which can cause a nasty blister. And that's all I do. Um, when I'm done, you can rip it off and there's no CA on your finger. Makes it nice and easy. I'll go ahead and apply the first coat of CA glue because this is going to kind of be a reveal as well as to how this blank is going to look. And I think it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. Is that not amazing? I just, I, I love figured wood and it's just, it's got a flame pattern in it. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to go ahead and get uh, maybe six to eight more coats of CA on here. And then we're going to go after it with the micro mesh pads and put a little polish on it. I won't make you guys watch all of that. I've done it in so many of my other videos. Um, but wow, I'm, I'm blown away with this piece of wood. I just finished polishing. And I wanted to give you a quick peek at just how amazing this piece of wood is. I'm, I'm in love with it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful piece of wood. Let me get it off the lathe and I'll show you guys how to uh, put this particular pin together. I'm ready now for assembly. The only part of the slimline pin we won't need is the chrome trim ring. I'm going to lay that aside. You've seen my other videos. I use these to do repairs and modifications on pins. Here's my blank. I've still got the tube inside of the pin, and I want to leave it in there because any pressure I put on the blank, I want to make sure that I've got the support of the tubes while I do that. So make sure, yep, my press is the right distance apart. I'm going to take my, there we go, clip and my back end of my pin, my cap, and I'm going to press them in. Okay, I really like how that looks. And now to give away the secret as to how this pin really does work. Pull the tube out of the front of your blank. We're going to go ahead and take the nib. I probably should have adjusted my, 
press here. Now you do not want to put a lot of pressure on this because you don't want to damage the tube. Just enough pressure to push it right up to the end of the nib. Now we'll take our transmission, put it on the opposite end. And I'm going to press the transmission in and I like to go up to about the brass and once again not too much pressure. I don't want to damage my tube. And then I'm going to go ahead and test. And you can see I need to probably put the transmission in at least almost up to the ring or the little mark on the transmission. So get a piece of cardboard here. And once again, lots of easy pressure. Don't want to put too much pressure on it. And I think it needs to extend just maybe a fraction more. So I'm going to give it one more tap. There we go. Nice and easy. That always makes me nervous when I do that last tap. There we go. That is perfect. And to finish the pin, you simply slip this part into the pin. And the back tube grabs a hold of the transmission, and that's what allows you to turn the nib to extend and retract the ink. To get it out of there, you just have to get a good grip on this. And I have a little WD-40 on my hands today because I was lubricating my, my press. But you can just get a hold of it and pull it right out. There it is. That allows you to change your ink. Pop it right back in. And we have what I consider to be an absolute gorgeous pin. And I will be getting this in the mail to Becky. Uh, this is going to be a gift to her. I hope she likes the pin. I hope this is what she was looking for in regard to a more comfortable grip. Uh, if not, Becky, please let me know and we'll take another swing at it. I'd like to hear what you guys think about this pin. It's not difficult to make. I hope that a bunch of you attempt it, and I would really love to see the photos of the pins that you come up with. Thank you for watching, and remember, you are always welcome in my shop. Have a great evening, guys. Talk to you soon.